this huge semi truck pulls down my like quaint little alley on like a weekend morning in Wilmette and we were like, oh my God, what did we just get into? And we'd like jump in and like box by box, take out all these bouquets. And I remember at the end of the day, looking over this makeshift cooler and everyone went home and I was like, shit, now we gotta sell all these flowers. My parents were both very successful. My mom became a partner at a law firm. My dad is an entrepreneur. Um, but what's interesting in both of their lines of work is they decided to pursue more social justice work instead of the, the better paying opportunities in their professions. Uh, my dad started a nonprofit for uh, victims of gun violence called Allies of Innocence in the South Side of Chicago. My mom, she was an employment and labor attorney. So I think that might have informed a little bit about where I got both that like ambitiousness, but also prioritizing people who need your help. So I was always interested in community civic service, social justice, politics, and I went to study at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I graduated with political science and Middle East studies. Uh, perfect segue into flowers. I thought I was on that kind of a track, and um, you know, life throws some, some curveballs at you. Flowers, which is now consumes my life, had no impact on me or my life up until I was 19 years old when I got into the industry. I had a friend who came from a long floral industry lineage. His dad was a big wholesaler in New England. When the, the son of the person I met at college and his brother were high schoolers, teenagers, they would work in the summer for their dad packing boxes, ringing up florists at the register. And at the end of the week, a wholesale florist has a huge amount of spoilage. So being kind of enterprising kids, they realized, let's bundle up this spoilage as bouquets and sell them. And this is Boston, so there's universities and colleges everywhere you walk. Bundled them up in bouquets and sold them for like $40 outside of graduation. I wasn't interested in business, that's important to note, but I realized that buying something for $0 and selling it for 40 could kind of be the cure to my like unpaid internship ills. I was so like motivated by this idea to like sell flowers at graduations. So I ended up buying hundreds and hundreds of bouquets out of the gate from this guy in New England on credit. Bad idea, but I asked my parents, I was like, hey, can you give me one half of your two car garage this summer for two months? Uh, I'm gonna turn it into a cooler. And I think my parents probably attest to this is, whatever it is, good or bad, I always kind of went full bore at things. So like when I was, when I got hyped on this flower idea, I went all in and they didn't know how many thousands of dollars I was in debt to this wholesaler. Luckily they were supportive. So I literally, with a couple of our buddies, Joe, myself, and a few of our good friends, we tarped up one half of the garage. We put two air conditioner units in the window and tried to make a makeshift cooler. I started learning about the industry right away. I started navigating which graduations are gonna even be able to go to, which are we not allowed at. First few experiences pedaling were not great. And we got kicked out right away. And we're like, what are we doing? And this is really silly, it's not working. But you know, it's almost like a gambler. I was in debt. I needed, the, I had all these flowers and I had only so much time to move it. We had about two weekends of commencements to get through those flowers. So we went to everything we could uh, early on as we started our seasonal business, which essentially was we sold flowers on behalf of high schools and colleges at their proms, graduations, and things like that. I realized what would be really impactful for these partnerships was if every bouquet in some form or fashion went back to the school. So it started where we would sell flowers to these schools and a portion of the sales would go back to a student organization or a scholarship fund. People were like really motivated by that to buy the flowers and participate in like prom corsages or graduation bouquets. So we ended up going even further and flagship piece of our seasonal business was every bouquet we'd sell, period, would donate a backpack with school supplies to a Chicago public school student in need. 
So it ended up being all of that. So we'd sell the flowers, a portion would go back to the school we're selling at, and then a backpack would also be donated for every single sale to a less fortunate school. And that was really when my passion for, I guess, community service, civic service, social justice, things that I'd already been interested in, intersected with flowers, which was, at the time, a way to make extra money. Those experiences were like the formative combination that led to why I wanted to do Flowers for Dreams and the concept behind it. Each month we team up with a different charity and we give them a quarter of our profits from all our flower sales. Really the piece that made it something that I was gonna commit my life to was that premise, which was using these beautiful local bouquets to advance causes of justice and charity in the community. Uh, we're a B Corp, so that's kind of a, a badge, I think, of our commitment to these ideals and values of supporting our community. B Corp doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people yet, but it takes, I think, a few businesses and people to take a chance on something like B Corp and really go the extra mile to figure out how to become one because I believed so much in what they were doing as like a larger, how we can improve capitalism, how we can improve businesses. And I was like, I have a chance to participate in it. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of time and we might not get approved and it's not gonna mean anything to our customers. And it's gonna require us to do things that might hurt the business in the short term. But it meant a lot and I realized when you have the power to do something like that, we wanted to do it. We think it's it's where people are going and that, that conscious consumerism is important. In a sense, this gives customers insight into, is this business really doing what they say they're doing? Success is relative, right? I think it's important though to not, for just like a human being's health, to not constantly change the goalposts on yourself. So I, I, I told myself at 19, we'd be here, I'd be super happy. Uh, but at the same time, it's not just about me, right? It's about other people and they want growth in their career and they want opportunities to expand. And I want that too. So I think we have a good mix of being cautiously expansive and cautiously ambitious. We care a lot more about being great than being big. And we think that big will probably follow as an opportunity of being great. My name is Steven Dime. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Flowers for Dreams.